Project Cars 2. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words of the developer. The ultimate driver journey, Project Cars 2, delivers the soul of motor racing in the world's most beautiful, authentic and technically advanced racing game. First of all, guys, I'd just like to thank uh, the developers and publishers for not sending me a copy of this, even though they promised me they would, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it's even more of a shame when I see that they've sent copies out to these f***ing idiots who don't even know a good car game from a bad car game. Yeah, we've got people who are reviewing the story and the f***ing music in a, in a sim, in a, in a f***ing car racing sim. And it's the same people, guys, these yes-men. You know who I'm talking about. You watch the footage, right? You watch... I dare you, I double, triple dare you to watch the gameplay footage of their f***ing review. You won't see them hardly ever turn a corner. It's so full of cuts. Every time they're coming up to a point where they have to turn a corner, they are f***ing cut away. And when they do turn a corner, they don't even know the proper f***ing racing line to take when they're coming up to a corner. They're turning on a left-hand bend and they're on the left side of the f***ing road and wonder why they're smacking off the bloody barriers. They haven't a f***ing clue. And these people are telling you whether you should buy a f***ing car racing simulator. My goodness. So let's get on with it, shall we? We're going to start by saying this game is brilliant. I absolutely love it. Don't take any notice of the piss-poor reviews that are going around from these f***ing sim racers who are so f***ing shite at driving that they're blaming the game. They blame the force feedback. Oh, I can't go. The force feedback never told me enough information about the bend. Oh, I've just crashed. Well, do you know something? I was putting in blistering lap times around Formula 1 circuits before force feedback was even invented. We use our f***ing eyes. We know whether we're going too fast into a corner because we can see the corner and see the speed that we're going. You know, you don't have to be a f***ing... Who, who are these f***ing sim racers? My oath. F*** off. All people want to know. We don't care. I'm not a sim racer. All people want to know is, is this game fun? Can you drive it without having to have enough gear to f***ing fill your computer room out with? Can you just pick up a basic wheel and pedals and drive this thing? And the answer to that is yes. Do you need to know how to do car setups? No, you don't. I've just started on this game and I've done about six or seven hours on it and I absolutely love it. I've had some amazing races straight out of the box without doing the setups, but it depends on the kind of cars that you're racing. And I'm going to spend the majority of this review talking about how the cars handle, what the force feedback's like, what the circuits are like, and what the different cars are like. I won't bother you with the bullshit that you don't even care about, all right? So let's start straight away with the setups. These are the mechanics who set your car up. You do it, or the game has a really helpful bit where you can just kind of say, look, I don't know what to do with the suspension and your mechanic will turn around and say to you well what, what's happening is your back end sliding out is it is it is it oversteering or understeering you know and you can kind of tell it by the feel after you've gone around the circuit and it'll tell you what to do to fix that which is a really great thing which means that you don't need to know what wing is you don't need to know whether your brake balance is should be forward or backwards you don't need to know any of these things really uh, to get good at this game and i love that i love that because you know i don't know everything about the setups i know about the brake balance i know about the suspension the differential and the wings and of course the gear ratios for example um in the formula Ray car around monza and the reason i chose monza is because if you look at all my car simulator reviews they're all on monza so you can compare them and i think that's a good a good idea doing them, all of them on the same track so you can see the differences so we're doing monza again on this with also a lot of brands hatch footage and on monza i found on the formula Ray car i could not get the back end right until i did go into the settings and change the suspension i also um, extended the gear ratios so that when i put my foot down on the gas pedal there wasn't a, that much power going to the um, back wheel all of a sudden and it did make it a lot more drivable but these cars you have got to be careful if you put your foot down the back end's going to go if you would turn that wheel you've got to coax it and feather it out of the corners you've got to really feel it and the force feedback is phenomenally good in this game it gives me i'm using a gta 300 wheel, wheel and pedals and i get all the information i need in that to be able to drive around the circuit and have excellent races the ai is fully tweakable you can turn it up or turn it down you can make it aggressive or not too aggressive and you do have to tweak it because if you don't tweak it it'll be like a bell end driving it really will you have to 
you have to one of the things about this game is right you have to get into them settings and start changing them if you just switch the game on and start playing it out of the box you're going to run into problems it's as simple as that so get into the settings tweak the ai so that it's about your level make it maybe a little bit better than you so that it gives you something to to strive for as you're going around and then you won't have much trouble with it just don't be a dick on the corners the amount of videos i've watched of people being total knobheads going into corners and then blaming the ai no just don't be a dick on the corners took out a, a portion of Jag on a California Highway Race. That was great, some amazingly difficult bends on there. I had a fantastic time on that. Um, but I think the best one was around Brands Hatch uh, in touring cars. I was in the uh, Mercedes. And this is my first time on Brands Hatch. And this, I don't even know the circuit. I learned it as I went along. And I'm using VR. And guys, I've got to say, I've got to say, people who say VR is a gimmick, wow. You just couldn't be further from the truth. VR on this game with the wheel and pedals is, well, it's one of the best gaming experience, probably the best gaming experience I've ever, ever, ever had. It is absolutely f***ing phenomenal. There was sweat dripping off my nose as I was as I was racing around it. It was just unbelievable race that I had. I eventually won it, took the guy on the last lap, and it was so much fun just getting the back end out on the corners, the amount of fighting out that I was doing with the wheel, it was just telling me everything that was going on. You know, if you ever go through a puddle or anything, it just tells you. You can feel the car losing. You can tell whether it's going to understeer or oversteer. You can cause it to oversteer uh, just by blipping on, the, on the, uh, the, the pedal. And it just gives you so much control. You hit the apexes when you want to. Yeah, you're still going to make mistakes. But it is so damn good, this game. I mean, really is so damn good. I did try it with the controller. Um, it is better than Project Cars was with the controller. You can drive this thing with a controller, but why would you want to? Why would you want to? You can pick up very cheap wheel and pedal systems now. And having one with this game is just great. Especially if you're playing multiplayer and things like that. I mean, I'm currently just playing around with uh, single player. There are so many options in this game. I think I said in the last game, the options had options. And it's, it goes with this one as well. You can change the field that you're racing. You can race against old cars. I mean, one of the cool things I did was I, I put myself last on the grid and filled the, the grid full of um, all different classes of cars from the same class as me right down to cars that was like six classes below me or so. And it was just so much fun coming up behind a car in your, I was in a Lamborghini Aventador, I think. And I was coming up behind these old style 1970 BMW and just blistering past them. It was just a bit of fun, but it's so much fun. It's so versatile, this game, and that's what I like about it. There's, there's something here for everybody. It's a massively deep game. It has 180 plus cars. And they're all like licensed. It's like they're not, you know, the proper cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, pretty much there's the list. You can see the sheer amount of cars. It also have a, has a shitload amount of tracks. It also has 24-hour cycles as well, real-time conditions and seasonal ambience as well. So you can just, you have control over everything. You control the weather, you control everything about this game. It has proper good pit stops as well, where you have a pit crew. And you can, unlike any other game I've played, you can switch off pit help. So you have to drive into the pits and you have to drive out. There's none of this like an F1 2017 where it takes control of your car and drives you into the pits. You do it yourself. And it's just so good. You've got a pit limiter, which you bind to a button on your wheel or something, so you know you're not going to go over the speed limit in the pits. And the whole game is just excellent. It reeks of excellence. If you are a racing fanatic, if you like the idea of racing around uh, uh, lots of different circuits in lots of different cars with terrific f force feedback, this is the game for you. Uh, I don't think I'm going to recommend it if you've got a controller. 
I'm going to say that these are the games that are made for wheel and pedals and virtual reality. I tried racing around here without virtual reality. I can't. Well, I can. I, I did well. I did a, no, a really good job of it, but it's so shit. It's so shit without VR. Well, it's not so shit without VR. It's just if you've played VR, you can't go back to flat screen because it is night and day, the comparison. Uh, you are in the car in virtual reality. The noise of that engine is just phenomenal when you are racing down the streets. And the feel of every gear change, the car lurches. It's Guys, it's just f***ing amazing. It really is. The, the authenticity of this game is just brilliant. Not that I've raced a Formula uh, 1 car around, uh, around Monza, but... You know, I did kart racing, and I know what it's like to be low down, going extremely fast into a tight corner, overtaking somebody. And this game just replicates that so well. It is such a good game, and I highly recommend it if you have the means, especially if you've got VR. But even if you don't have VR, it is well worth a buy. It is one of the best driving games out there. It's right up there with a set old Corsa, and it's just great. It's so versatile as well. So. So there you go guys, it has full career, it has multiplayer, it has a massive amount of single player and a massive amount of options with shit tons of cars, shit tons of tracks and shit tons of options. What more do you want? Great driving, what a win, fantastic job.